you signed on the dotted line, you knew what you were signing up for. If you die, you die. Hey, you shouldn't have signed up for it. So intimidating. Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. 60 seconds, 15 feet. <laughs> like you, you're, you're right there and immediately back into business. As long as the shareholders are getting paid, you're getting paid, everybody's getting paid. Who cares? That's so, that's so little human to recognize. He's like, I remember <laughs> you. I shot you like six weeks ago. Like, today we're doing a little bit of change of pace. We're going to watch a historical documentary from 1987, RoboCop. What do you think about this movie? I give RoboCop an eight out of 10 overall. I thought it's a, it's a great movie. I've watched it many times. Uh, it is a little campy at times, but it has got great themes. It's got it's great sci-fi. Lots of things about corporatism, pollution, policing, dystopia. Like, is RoboCop a person? Like, all of these themes are wrapped up in this kind of goofy sounding movie that just kind of feels like an action comedy almost sometimes. But underneath the surface, there's a lot. So 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, there's a great cast. Uh, interesting, I watched it as a teenager, but as an adult, it uh, hits different now. Because some things are a little bit <laughs> too close to home too close to real society i'm like that's supposed to be in dystopian science fiction please don't do that in real life um the ending was happy but it didn't feel that way um and the goopy goofiness and com comedy coupled with the darkness and violence it is a weird emotional ride so overall robocop is one of a kind i give it eight out of ten what did you think i give it a nine out of ten so and exactly as you said, as an adult, that hit differently. I saw this when I was a kid, maybe six years old, five years old. Whoa. Definitely, definitely, yeah, way too young. My parents <laughs> didn't. <laughs> my parents didn't care at all. Yeah, but but it was there were definitely scenes that I was like way too much for a kid, um, and then scenes that just went over my head as a kid. But now as an adult, I understand it differently. And so so particularly particularly around RoboCop's family, that stuff that stuff hit real different. Um, but overall, like yeah, you're right. You're, it has this this goofiness, this like silliness. It feels like it's going to be like a summertime shoot 'em up. But actually, RoboCop delivers. It delivers on high level science fiction. It delivers on science fiction that questions re the what is a being? What because RoboCop is this former human, but now he's a robot. But he's a little bit of both. And he, and RoboCop very subtly deals with these thoughts of what 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 am I? What am I? And so fantastic film. Not only just shoot 'em up fun, but actually high level sci fi. And the concept of this is that gore is still there. Like <laughs> as a kid, I looked away, which like shielded me. But here as a doll, I'm, like, I'm, I'm gonna be tough. I'm gonna watch it. And it's 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 graphic. It's way more graphic than modern films. But it's a part of it. It's a part of it. Enjoy it. Go for the ride. It's a wild ride. Uh, let's talk about it today. Let's do it. So we start off with some newscasts. Let's uh see what the newscasts talk about. Very similar to like um, Starship Troopers, but these are newscasts in dystopian RoboCop. Let's watch. Three dead police officers, one critically injured. Police union leaders blame Omni Consumer Products, OCP, the firm which recently entered into a contract with the city to fund and run the Detroit Metropolitan Police so this Department. this is crazy Jones, to me. Division. The police is being run and taken over by a corporate entity. This is wild. Like the police is supposed to be government run, no profit motive for the public mm -hmm. good. Now, not just police, but the entire justice department of the, of the nation. We want to have justice separated from financial corporate interests. That's right, because profit motive is a total conflict of interest with justice that keeps society together. To merge mm -hmm. the two, that is wild. Yeah, you could really mess. You could really have messed up situations where there are conflicting incentives. For like, if you wanted to get people into jail, but then if you somehow made money by keeping them in there, then how would you ever get them out? How would you ever have them have reasonable terms? That's right. And if a corporation is con is doing crime, but they also run the police and the justice department, they have an incentive not to enforce the laws on themselves. Right. Who checks them? I mean, nobody dystopian society, science fiction stuff. That's, that's what we're here for, science fiction. Yeah, yeah. Division President OCP. Every policeman knows when he joins the force that there are certain inherent risks that come with the territory. Ask any cop, he'll tell you. If you can't stand the heat, you better stay out of the kitchen. Although seriously wounded, Officer Frank Fredrickson escaped and identified this man, Clarence Bodiker. Wait, 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 wait,
So this guy whose name is Dick, he says, Dick. if you can't stand the heat, get out of the fire. And he's talking about the policeman. So like if you, th isn't that messed up? He's basically saying that cops shouldn't be cops if you can't risk being killed every day. That's right. And he's, he's sort of saying cops can be mistreated because, hey, you signed on the dotted line. You knew what you were signing up for. If you die, you die. Hey. You shouldn't have signed up for it. Yeah. You shouldn't have signed up for it. What are you doing? Like, we don't need to, we're not responsible for your job. We can put you in line of fire all day long. Gosh, that's why corporations should be separate from legal, from like lawful entities, mm -hmm. because his incentive is to not care about the police. His incentive is to make money. That's right. His incentive is to make money. So the lives of the police officers are kind of not important for that. Ooh, not good. That's not good and, for society. And just spouting off these like sayings. If you can't handle the heat, stay out of the kitchen as cover for his profiteering. Whew. Brutal. E ethics be damned as long as I got a good <laughs> quip. <laughs> Fredrickson escaped and identified this man. Clarence Bodiker, unofficial ah, okay. crime boss of old Detroit, now sought in connection with the deaths of 31 police officers. Today he's at large, while doctors at Henry Ford Memorial Hospital fight to save the life of Officer Frank Fredrickson. Good luck, Frank. Good luck, Frank. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like propaganda, doesn't it? Where it's like, mm. this guy has been, this is a crime boss. He's bad. This cop, he's in hurting. He's good. But actually, the situation is very complicated. And we're just getting a very simple understanding of what the events are. But once you dig in, you dig in through the movie, they'll tell us what, how it goes down. It's actually mm. super messy. Super messy. Here's another one about, I don't know, there's rebels in Mexico taking over Acapulco. It's crazy. Let's watch. More fighting in the Mexican crisis today when American so troops happy. participated in a joint raid with Mexican nationals against rebel rocket positions in Acapulco. Goddamn rebels blew up the airport of Acapulco yesterday. Great. <laughs> we were going there next week. So yeah, this I, is, I, uh, go, go ahead. ahead go, go ahead. ahead. Right, I laughed. I laughed because when this guy says that there's rebels in Acapulco, mm -hmm. Robocop, like, coinc I think it's coincidental. It looks like mm -hmm. he's like, oh, no. He, like, really responds mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, I think it is coincidental. He's having a bad dream. Yesterday. Great. We were going there next week. <laughs> I mean, I would have a bad dream if Alcabalco was had terrorists. Yeah. Yeah. But this also hits, it also hits close to home because there are these resort towns in Mexico that have extremely high crime and drug cartel problems. And us Americans are like, well... I wanted to go there. There's problems. Oh. Like they, they, there's terrible things the happening. Resort. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 A little bit. A little bit of behind the scenes. We went to Cabo. We went to Cabo for one of our mm -hmm. buddies' weddings, and we we're like on the plane, and we're like, "What's the crime rate?" Right. <laughs> and it's the crime capital of all the Americas. Oh, not the crime capital. It's the murder capital of all the Americas. Yeah. But it's like as long as you stay on the resort, it's fine. Like, what? What is going on? Yeah. What's going on in our society where like things are just just if you look behind mm -hmm. this curtain, things are just terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and then so the prediction here in Robocop is that Mexico might turn into a full full blown civil war. I don't think we're there, but the cartel situation in modern life is civil war light, I guess you could call it, is yeah. not good. Yeah. And the way these guys are talking about this these horrible situations is very similar to how Americans talk about the stuff going on in Mexico. It's so dark. It's very blase fair, very like, eh, whatever. Like, but yeah. like, it's real. Like, it's super, it's super real. These people are getting hurt. And this is another prediction of Robocop, which is there'd be South Africa's apartheid state would continue and they get nuclear weapons and neutron bombs. Let's watch. Top story, Pretoria. The threat of nuclear confrontation in South Africa escalated today when the ruling white military government of that besieged city-state unveiled a French-made neutron bomb and oh, affirmed French. its willingness to <laughs> use the three megaton device as the city's last line of defense. So I don't think this, this did not happen. Right? Apartheid ended peacefully, mostly peacefully, and there's a new government in South Africa. So this mm -hmm. didn't happen. But... The idea of like rogue states doing terrible things, getting nuclear weapons, this is this is valid, valid fear, right? Yeah, it's very possible that a government could have chemical or biological weapons and they could hold people at terror. That's right. That's why you got to go so, in and get them, get the weapons. Go, go and get them. Let's go get them. Bring them some freedom. Helldivers too. Okay. 
That's such a good game. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is interesting. So RoboCop Society, I guess it's still the United States, is a dystopian kind of nightmare, but also high tech stuff. So let's watch this. And the president's first press conference from the Star Wars orbiting peace platform got cool. off to a shaky start cool. when power failed, causing a brief but harmless period of weightlessness for the visiting president and his staff. So, so the president could go up to space and right. there's gravity in space? What? Yeah, so she said she said that there was a power failure in the Star Wars space station platform guy. There's a power mm -hmm. failure and then they lost gravity because of it. Does that mean that they have powered gravity in space right because if it was like a rotating space station mm -hmm. then if power went down it would continue to rotate it still spins yeah it's still yeah. going to spin so you wouldn't lose gravity mm -hmm. so that means if power goes down gravity turns off that means there's like some kind of advanced gravity tech i, I think that's too much the the way i figured out the way i figured this scene made sense was they have some type of electromagnetic shoes so if you lose uh, power, then you lose like the coupling, just like just like with the the, the mm -hmm. recycling yard or when you have like the auto junkyard, you have this magnet mm -hmm. and then they turn it on and it like sucks up the car, but then you turn off the power and it drops the car, just like that. So so that's what I figured they were doing on the space station. Um, but but mm. to your point, yeah, it's this dystopian future. It's this vision of the future that things are not working well and society isn't working well. But also at the same time, things can be very good in a dystopian society. It's not like everything's bad altogether. Like some things can be very good. And for example, this. Yeah. So it's like dystopian society and space technology taken off. Crazy. And then the Star Wars weapons platform misfires, causes fires. Let's watch. Top story, Santa Barbara. 10,000 acres of wooded residential land were scorched in an instant when a laser cannon <laughs> aboard the Strategic Defense Peace Platform misfired today during routine startup tests. But this was an actual thing back in the 80s, right? This idea of Star Wars, because it was it was us versus the US, the US versus USSR. And we thought, mm -hmm. like, if they have missiles and we have missiles, what can we do? We can put a satellite up in space and shoot down their missiles with lasers before they could get to us. But I think we made an agreement, right, an international agreement that we would not do these things. We would not have Star Wars. I don't know if it was an international agreement. Was it technically too challenging? I don't remember why it got shut down. I mean, anything it, too challenging is a matter of time. That's right. So maybe it was not viable in the 80s, but maybe in the future it'll be viable. In fact, maybe in the future we would want it. For example, this laser, this laser could be super useful for colonizing a planet. So you have a mountain, like you're trying to colonize Mars and you have this mountain or, or really like rocky granular stuff, boulders. And you're like, I need a flat space so I can land my ship. I need a flat space so I can build the first colony. With these space lasers, you just melt everything down. And that's why it's a peace platform. That's it's right. doing ex it's doing remote excavation. It's not it rocks it breaks those destroy. rocks into pieces. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was misfired, so you know it did damage to Santa Barbara. But that's you know it's a misfire. Yeah. It's really for peace. That's right. It could never be used against our enemies. I mean, we wouldn't want it to, but then all we have to do is not point it at them. That's right. It's for peace. Also, these Jesus. newscasts just hit a little too close to home with yeah. just, is it news or is it propaganda? Is it news or am I being told a message? Like I, in the age of social media, I don't always know yeah, the I difference. Know. Yeah. So who's to say that, that that laser shot was from the U.S. space laser and not from oh. an enemy space laser? And then, But the news, they say it's like, oh, it's a misfire. Like. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we don't have embarrassment. It was misfired by us. We're not actually, we, it's not that we right. can't defend ourselves against the enemy. Like the, right. The embarrassment of we made a mistake is much, is, is not as bad as the enemy attacked us and got away with it. Right. So who to trust? I mean, you, in this, in the Robocop universe, we're not supposed to trust the news, but it's obvious to us as the audience. But in real life, <laughs> how do I know which is which? I don't know. It's so good can't tell when you're in the bubble it's hard to tell it's hard to tell this is detroit 
So the skyline of Detroit, I see the OCP wait, tower. Wait, this is not real. Wait, wait, wait. This is Robocop Detroit. This is Robocop <laughs> this is, Detroit. Okay, okay. okay. I, <laughs> so they've got the OCP tower sticking out above the skyline, yeah. looking great. Uh, lots of um, skyscrapers looking big, strong. This is a very different skyline than today's Detroit. Um, Detroit is, I mean, it must have really changed. I mean, I mean so if we go if, to the left here, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, I yeah, was going to say that the Delta City, the future has a silver lining. I mean, heck yeah. I mean, there's, we're imagining a dystopian city, a future, but this looks great with prosperity. In fact, there's like active construction uh, and these buildings are strong yeah. and tall. Like, heck yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. And this is modern Detroit. It's okay. a little bit, it's smaller, but. I mean, not bad. Looks, I mean, looks, looks, looks good. All these like high rises, there's mm -hmm. high quality construction that's lasting a long time. Yeah. I think some of those high rises are actually abandoned. I don't know what the current status oh. is. And okay. it is kind of, this toy is kind of dystopian. I think if you're actually there, you're like, actually, this isn't so nice, but from afar, it looks okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I mean, gosh, from afar, these buildings, I mean, they, they just steal the attention. What, yeah. what are these? I think this is the, the GM. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's GM. the little symbol there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the big like, car companies, Detroit. That's your thing, right? Detroit. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that GM is there. I don't mm. think the Ford or Chrysler are in downtown Detroit. I think it's only GM. Oh, but either way, compared to the Detroit in RoboCop, there's been a resurgence, a revival in Detroit, right? In the future, is mm. that what they're saying? Oh, you're because, saying, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you're saying this is Detroit now. Yeah. And in the future, in this, in the Robocop universe, uh, the city has had some type of boom where they've built new skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. And the skyline is totally new. Mm. So somehow Detroit has a revival. Also, no traffic. Look at that. Ooh, clean in the streets. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like 5 a.m., but. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, yeah, you know what? 5 a.m. in a metropolitan area, you still get traffic. People are still getting traffic. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the robot. This is the, the counter robot. So there's Robocop versus this other guy, the Enf Enforcement Droid 209. And so this is what one vision is of what law enforcement could be. Fellow executives, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the future of law enforcement. Ed 209. So intimidating. Yeah. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense because if law enforcement is a super dangerous job, which absolutely mm -hmm. is, then mechanize it. Put a robot there. Yeah. Couple that with some AI decision making. Perfect yeah. aim. Hell yeah. Mm hmm. Also, I like that this is a, it's a prototype. So it's a demonstration robot and there's like mm -hmm. loose wires and stuff and tubes, which makes sense because it's not fully armored up. Kind of looks realistic for a demo, right? Like up there on yeah, the exactly. left arm. Yeah. You see like some exposed wires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of reasonable, right? My question is it's a biped. Is that mm -hmm. reasonable to have like a biped robot? Gosh, biped sounds difficult to me because biped has to have like dynamic control whereas like what do you mean? quadruped can be more stable most of the time like balance isn't an issue oh i see you're saying like when you're human when you like lift up one leg you like lift up one leg your other leg and muscles around it are doing all these little micro adjustments yeah. and so so why have a robot that teeter totters like that why not just give yeah. it three or more legs uh, yeah, I want to give it more legs so that it's always in a stable mode. It's never like losing its balance. All the yeah, time. <laughs> like, like <laughs> strong gust of wind, this thing falls over and shoots falls everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so are you cool thinking though. though, like biped, not, not necessarily a balance thing, but just maybe navigating the world thing? Yeah, I guess I was thinking it mostly from a balance thing because and also, I guess, a rigidity, because if okay. this, okay, so it, say it picks up its its right leg, right? Mm -hmm. And so its left leg is firmly planted. That means at the moment when the right leg is up in the air, then the whole mm -hmm. body is balanced on this one leg, which means this joint 
it's not just a, like a front back thing. It needs to be able yeah. to be front back and also sideways stuff, which means this leg is just going to be weaker. And so mm-hmm. why not either give it four legs that can all walk forward or wheels mm-hmm. or hovercraft or something, just more mobility. Um, I'm not sure that a biped is really the way you want to go for a robot. Hmm. And it's for a biped, it's not, it's so big that it's going to be like on the street maybe, but navigating other things would be challenging. Plus you got the dynamics of the bipedal. Gosh, on the street, like uh, say, it's, say it's walking the sidewalk and it needs to turn around. It's like, do, 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 like taking, oh, yeah. taking like 70 little micro steps. Like why not either, either have the torso that can just fully turn around or just have wheels and you can just point these wheels on a circle and just spin around. But don't wheels, don't wheels restrict the surfaces it can walk on? So like it's pretty much streets and that's it. Whereas if it's biped, it's like, okay, if we go into a junkyard or we go into a grassy area, I'm, it's okay. Maybe. That's a good point. So maybe the better thing is to just have this thing fly. It'll hover jets and doesn't have to deal with the ground at all. That sounds like fuel intensive. Lots Ooh, of and if somebody cost. somebody like slingshots the little slingshot into the rotor and then it crashes and hits a bunch of kids, like okay, that's also not good. Well, it's not it's not good, but it doesn't hit it doesn't hurt the bottom line. So that's right. The company still needs to sell another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, you got a, you got a point yeah. there. So they do a demo of the ED two oh nine, and there's a a mishap. Let's call it a mishap. Ed. Two oh nine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got the board. It's like it's pointing guns at me. <laughs> Mr. Kinney is going to help us simulate a typical arrest and disarming procedure. Use He's your like, gun I in a not, manner. Point it at Ed. Not sign up for it. Like, yeah, I came in today for a meeting. I didn't like plan to be handed a gun. Yeah. Handed a gun and then yes, he pointed sir. at with other guns with live rounds. Live rounds. Okay, oh, but also look how proud these scientists are. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Like, Doing, yeah a good my... Doing a good yeah. job. Well, so far. Please put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. I mean, he said please. That's pretty good. Right? <laughs> you now have 15 seconds to comply. You now have 5 seconds to comply. I am now <laughs> they don't mess around. It's like a lot of physical force. <laughs> oh, just, just imagine being in the room as a board member, and you're like, this intimidating thing pointed guns at us, and a guy just died. Why was there live rounds in the thing? This is a demo. Give it BBs. That's right. Yeah, it could little water balloons. Like, yeah, but in real world, we we'll use guns. It's like, I guess they yeah. didn't have to kill this guy. Yeah, <laughs> loaded up with live rounds in the boardroom with all the heavy hitters. What are we doing? Okay, but at the same time, these engineers, like, their robot worked, right? <laughs> right, right, right. There was a threat. It took out the threat. Gosh, is this like? So, if you're giving a demo, you've done. Mm-hmm. They've probably done testing again and again and again in the lab. It's worked flawless. Yeah. They've they've done it twenty times in a row flawlessly. Not a problem. Now it's a real demo. Screw up. They were so confident and then it screwed up. And this is what happens in demos. Yeah, I've practiced time. many cannonballs. You know what happens when I ask my dad to watch? Mess it up. Mess every it up. time, every time as a kid. <laughs> <sighs> and there's so many, I'm thinking of the Elon Musk for the, uh, a couple years ago, he threw like this ball at the glass windshield oh, yeah. of the, the Cybertruck and it shattered. And it's like, of course they did practice demos and it worked every time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then when they get on stage, something was different and it. it shattered. It's like, dang, dang it happened. Dang it. Yeah. And here, the scientists, they screwed up. But what went wrong? How did how did they get to the point where they, they were so confident they put live ammo in it, but they overlooked something? The so, okay, so, so, okay, okay, okay. so they yeah. they probably practice this right because otherwise mm-hmm. you're going up to the c the entire executive board the entire c-suite like you don't want to be messing up there right? so they probably yeah. had one of these people 
like hold the gun and like mm-hmm. be a threat and then throw the gu- threat away and then and then it's done right mm-hmm. and so pro- and probably ed209 was okay there so yeah. my my guess is that maybe ed209 is working correctly and actually this guy is a criminal like right so ed209 knows that there's some something bad with this guy and mm-hmm. so he's correctly dealing out justice and the entire boardroom is filled with basically corporate criminals <laughs> and because yeah, but this guy he, had a gun. <laughs> and this guy had a gun, so he was able to take out a criminal. Yep. So maybe ED-209 is working on a higher level, higher plane of justice. Okay, let me tell you, you've fallen into my trap card. Okay, so ED-209 <laughs> is the perfect predator. Okay, it's almost the same scene. Let's watch it. Please put down your weapon. You have Please? 20 seconds to comply. That's polite. Yep. <laughs> Rawr. Intimidating. Pow, 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 pow. Somebody want to call a goddamn paramedic? Let's go, Johnson. Okay, look at this room. Okay, okay. okay. So all these yeah. people, non-combatants, innocent, not hit. Mm-hmm. One not bad hit. guy, completely hit. Super hit. All these windows in the background, not hit. Even the model, even the model wasn't mm-hmm. shot. The only reason the model, like this, this model of the city is damaged is because mm-hmm. the bad guy fell on it. Fell so on this, it. This, this ED-209 did a fantastic job. Like no over penetration, no hitting up other stuff erroneously. Like if you have a bad guy in a crowd, this ED-209 hits the bad guy and that's it. And that's it. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, because there's no, so it means every bullet that was fired ended up in the target. Mm-hmm. Nothing missed. And nothing went nothing too missed. far. He, the model of the city was destroyed of delta city was destroyed but you know that's okay it's not a, it's not a mm-hmm. living thing yep i mean this is great this is a great job I mean, this is a great job ed209 i mean Maybe yes ED-209. these engineers killed a dude but overall like proof of concept that's true and he probably was a criminal because so. he's a corporate criminal Yep. And if ED-209 has access to databases, he's going to know all the information about this guy and him dropping a weapon Little doesn't make him not a criminal anymore. That's right. So Can you rob a bank and be like, I put my gun down. I didn't do, I down. didn't rob yeah. him. Like, no, you still rob him. You got, you got literal bags of dollar signs. On, yeah, you're a criminal. Yeah. Perfect. That's how, Perfect job. That's how, that's how bank robberies go today. You have the, the bags with the dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, these corporate guys, the guy just died in front of their eyes in a violent manner. What are they doing? Corporate jockeying. Let's watch. I'm sure it's only a glitch, a temporary setback. You call this a glitch? We're scheduled to begin construction in six months. Your temporary setback could cost us $50 million in interest payments alone. Not necessarily, sir. Perhaps you're aware of the Robocop the bottom line. program developed by myself at Security Concepts as a contingency against just this sort of thing. So the head guy is thinking about 50 million in interest payments. Mm-hmm. Dick is thinking about covering his own ass. Mm-hmm. And Bob is thinking about making a sales pitch for his idea, which is a competitor to the ED-209. A guy just died 60 seconds ago, and we're already doing this. These guys are 60, psychopaths. 60, 60 seconds, 15 feet. It's like you're, you're, you're right there. And immediately back into business. Back in a business. Bottom line, how can I how can I work my way to the top? How can I get my bag? Like damn. Immediate sales pitch. Immediate sales pitch. Yeah. Right there. Just MBAs, just ready to rock. Ready to rock. I mean, gosh, this seems to hit close to home because, gosh, corporate leadership. If they're that psychopathic, that, oh, brutal. They're not just. They just don't care about anybody but themselves. That's, Time is money, never let us, something, tragedy, something, go to bad. Go, go, yep. go to waste, yep. yeah. But Gosh, to be fair, it, there's $50 million on the line. It's big, there's $50 big million on the line. Big money. Do I, this, okay, so I've never been in the C-suite, but if I picture C-suite people thinking about the bottom line, this is what I think. Like, yeah, this is just, this. <laughs> yeah. Like, is there a pollutants being put in the river? doesn't matter. We're just, we need to move about the bottom line. Did people get injured? Who cares? Bottom line. Like, is this consistent with modern behavior? 
But oh, I see. Yeah, I see. This is this is a dystopian imagination of a. This is imagination of a dystopian future, but actually, they these people are kind of right. Like, right. Kind it's of supposed to be a actually. caricature, but is it? Close the tab. <laughs> close, close the tab. Move on. It's not fun. Yeah, kind of, kind of plausible that that's how the actual behavior is. Mm-hmm. So they're in the lab. They're testing out the um, the arm of RoboCop, and they say it's four hundred foot pounds of something. Let's watch. Go ahead, shake his hand. Oh, God, he's got a hell of a grip. It's four hundred foot pounds. He could crush every bone in your hand. So first off, she said 400 foot-pounds. To me, foot-pounds okay. is the unit of energy or torque. Pretty sure it's not energy. So it's got to be torque, which yep. makes sense. Yep. So the hand is somehow applying 400 foot-pounds of torque. Is that a lot? Is that reasonable? Okay, so my, my experience with with foot pounds is from working on cars. Mm-hmm. And so you get you get a torque wrench, you get, like you mm-hmm. dial it into the right amount of torque and then you twist, 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 click. And that tells you mm-hmm. how tight you've turned something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, torque is like the turning force. Yeah. And so 400 foot pounds, that's like, that's, that's a lot compared to turning a bolt. Because depending on what type of bolt you use, you're looking for like 60 to 120, depending on the application. Okay. But what is that for human strength? Like, is that a normal human hand or is that like a, like a holy Hercules? Like you're, you're, you're strong. Yeah. So can we look up human hand strength? Human torque strength? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Human torque yeah, strength. Yeah. Human, uh, okay, I guess. Yeah. So this. It's saying it's a torque and the wait, mean wait, wait, for wait, wait, a wait. Newton meter. So, so, so wait, wait, okay. Too many things going on. <laughs> One yeah. is, it's RoboCop generates 400 which is in this range but that's foot pounds foot pounds and this is newton meters so this is newton this meter. is scientific international and so force times distance so that doesn't help me so it's the mm. same unit types multiplied together a force times a distance yeah but it's a different unit so let's, let's, we can't compare maybe, directly yeah maybe it will handle it there's lots of information here. Hang on, hang on. There's lots of stuff. Okay, so there's grip strength, mm-hmm. turning a circular knob or twisting a lid, pulling a horizontal bar. None of these are quite what we want. We want we want we, we want a handshake, right? A handshake is like a squish motion, which sounds like gripping strength. Because okay, gripping yeah, strength true. is this, uh-huh. but here the the data is in newtons, not a newton meter. Uh, right, right. Does that make sense? So do we, yeah. when you, when you grip something, do you care about the torque or the force of the grip? I see what you're saying. So your, your fingers are creating a torque. So anytime, yeah. anytime you get this rotation motion, it's creating a torque because you're making some type of spin. And if you, I guess you could say like, if your knuckle, the axis of your knuckles was, mm-hmm. was a, well, the line of your knuckles, if it was an axis, then you could say like, if I only applied force with my fingertips, then you mm-hmm. have, you have an axis, you have a moment arm, you have a force that is a torque, mm-hmm. but it's just, that would be, that would be such a weird way to describe someone grip. Like how much grip do they have their fingertips? Like, unless you're like a very specific rock climber. Um, I think this, I think this makes sense. Like this, this is a measurement of how much force your hand can generate when it crushes something. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. So then the, the fact that the scientist in the lab said foot pounds, okay. which is a torque is not quite grip strength. It's kind of something else. Yeah. Um, in fact, I don't know. I mean, we can convert a force into a torque or a torque into a force by dividing out the distance. So say, say I have a, here we go. Here's a chopstick <laughs> or, you know, here's a pen that I'll show it better. So if I have a pivot point, I'm going to pinch with my fingers. I can apply a force here and that would feel, and that feels different than if I apply a force here. Mm-hmm. And if I know how much, how much force is generated from my, and my fingers in order to keep it still, I could figure out how much force I'm putting with my finger here by dividing out this length. But what would the length be for the hand? 
it's going to be related to hand size, which is finger right. length, right? I guess. So a larger hand, you make it divide by a larger number or multiply by a larger number. But, and then a smaller hand, you're going to multiply by a smaller number, but that's kind of the wrong way to think about it because for the same muscle force, you're going to be able to apply less torque because you have a longer arm. Mm -hmm. So it's really even... not supposed to be a torque. It's really, I care about what, what can my force right. be with my fingers? Right. I don't really care what the, what the length of the fingers are. If I want to right. crush I'll... something, I care about the force. Perfect. So what does that mean for Robocop with his 400 foot bounds? I we think calculate? if oh yeah we did okay, yeah, we looked yeah, this we up. Did. So we just got a unit converter. So four hundred mm -hmm. foot pounds comes out to be five hundred forty two newton meters. Yep. So that's still a torque. Mm. Well, I mean, what's an average finger length? I don't know. Say like two centimeters in the midpoint. If you're crushing in the midpoint of the fingers. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because you don't you don't actually apply force with your fingertips it's like yeah. a, it's like everywhere it's like a gosh okay so not two centimeters as one centimeter is like your fingernail so uh three or four i mean there's not that much of a difference so, say three three centimeters maybe it's okay. okay from the knuckle i see it now three yep. okay yep from the knuckle three so we take gosh so, so four five hundred five hundred wait do you want to do yeah, 540 Divided by <coughs> so the length, but in meters. No, I guess what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea to compare the force. So Five, what, did I, what number did I say? Five forty two. Five forty two. Divided by the length, but in meters, so three centimeters. So is point oh three. Zero point zero three. Yeah. Oh. Holy crap! Eighteen k. What is a normal to... human? <laughs> there we go. Robocop All right. super strong. <laughs> Okay, let's get let's get let's get a little bit better. Divided by what was that number? Sixty four. Sixty four. Sixty four. He has an equivalent right. strength hand strength of two hundred eighty two people. Okay, that's strong. That'll crush your hand. Okay, I think I think we I think we figured it out. Mm -hmm. So four hundred foot pounds. A lot of people's hands. <laughs> yeah, four hundred foot pounds of torque. I think is an awkward unit. But making yeah. some assumptions about finger size of Robocop, three centimeters to the midpoint from the knuckle, we can convert that to a force, which I think is the more convenient unit for grip strength. And then we compared that to an average human grip strength, and we said it's 282 times bigger. So Robocop is yeah. strong. It's crushing things. Crushing things. That means anytime he interacts with stuff, like his gun or a doorknob, he's like just super gentle. <laughs> like Super gentle, yeah. He needs... He needs lots of fine calibration at well below his maximum strength. That's tricky. That's a good robot. Mm. So Robocop has these prime directives. There's three of them, which is kind of similar to the three laws of Asimov. So number one is serve the public trust. Number two, protect the innocent. Number three, uphold the law. Are these good directives for Robocop? I mean, they seem like all good things, right? Like protect the people, serve the public, and uphold the law. All those seem like good stuff. Yeah. So what is what is the public trust? What does that mean exactly? Public Oof. trust. Okay. So public is like the general people, not mm -hmm. specific people. But trust, do they mean trust as in the like people are trusting? Or do they mean trust as in like the good of the people? Is it also, is there like a legal trust? You know, like a trust fund? Like the entity? The entity yeah. of the public? Maybe that's what it is. So the trust fund is some sort of, has a legal meaning, and maybe public trust has a similar meaning. Can we look it up? Maybe it means what something. What is legal meaning trust? A trust is the legal relationship between a created in lifetime or in death by a settlor where assets are placed under the control of a trustee for the benefit or of a beneficiary or of a specific specified person. Okay. Can we put public trust? Can do. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> public trust 
doctrine is a legal principle establishing that a cer that certain natural and cultural resources are preserved for public use. Natural resources held in a trust can be can include navigable navigable waters, wildlife, or land. Oh, so he's like protecting anything that's owned by the public or has benefits mm. the public, like water, parks, streets. He needs Safety. to infrastructure. He needs to protect mm. it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. I like that. Protect the innocent. Mm. By public trust. Okay. But what defines the public trust? Like he works in Detroit. Does mm -hmm. that mean he needs to do things for greater Michigan? Like, does he need to do, like, does he need to care about the Great Lakes? I think the answer has to be yes. But what if, what if OCP is like, you know, we benefit the community quite a lot. So protecting OCP is the same as protecting the public trust. I think so. As long as they're both aligned. Okay. So oh, wait, OCP... wait, wait. But what if protecting OCP would do a greater benefit for the community than directly protecting the actual community? Isn't that also protecting the public trust? Right. So if OCP is polluting a waterway mm -hmm. and OCP is providing jobs to the community, should RoboCop protect OCP or like, should RoboCop stop OCP from polluting? That's ambiguous. I don't know. It, de it depends. It depends on how RoboCop's programming works out the greater good. Mm -hmm. Like, what does it mean to serve the public trust? I want to say Murphy, the cop, yeah, would be anti-OCP pollution, pro-protect the environment from pollution. I agree. But this is RoboCop. I don't know. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Move on. Yeah, <laughs> protect okay. the innocent. That seems fine. That seems fine. If a guy is a criminal, kill him. If a guy is not a criminal, it's fine. Okay, yes. that's wishy-washy, yeah. But it, yeah, it's also wishy-washy because it depends on what RoboCop sees as innocent. That's right. I mean, if somebody is committing a crime now versus somebody has committed a crime in the past but is now not, does that mean he's innocent or guilty? Does that mean he needs to be punished or does that mean he just doesn't need to be protected? That's right, because it's different. You don't necessarily, to, to not protect someone is not necessarily the same as punishing them. Right. Also, there are magnitudes of innocence. Like if you steal a lollipop that's from mm -hmm. a store, that's different than stealing a lollipop from a kid. That's different than stealing an entire car. That's different than, you know, stealing someone's house or whatever. They're all stealing, but they're very different. Right, and then how is innocence and guilt determined? Is that court of law stuff? Because we know that's a big messy thing. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Which then get, gets into uphold law number three, and the law is not always great. If you go by the letter of the law, bad things can happen for sure. Mm -hmm. And the law changes too. The law I wonder changes. How, <laughs> Robocop needs frequent updating. <laughs> right, because you could, you could create a lot. law. Pollution is legal, mm -hmm. which contradicts one. But mm -hmm. if you stop the pollution, you're contradicting three. Is there... Is there good rules of thumb for maybe a human to follow who is being honest and has integrity uh -huh. but these could easily be gamed right yeah and, and even even if it's not gamed which i totally valid it's totally possible it could be gamed <laughs> they could be easily contradictory so like robocop starts up oh, yeah. and he's like frozen like, like <laughs> con conflicting <laughs> messages like don't know what to do right because you'd almost think in every scenario that's complicated there's going to be aspects of one, two, and three that contradict each other. Right. It's not so clean. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And these are separate. These are separate from Asimov's laws. What are Asimov's laws? Let's let's look. As, let's look that up. Yeah. Uh, wrong window. Asimov laws. These are like the laws of robotics. Yeah. So a robot may not injure a human being or through through inaction. Wait, 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 let me start again. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Okay. okay. Reasonable. A robot must obey orders given it by human beings, except when such orders would conflict with the first law. Okay. okay. 
and oh yeah so you can't you can't give a robot an order which then can con- then hurts someone i see okay mm-hmm. our robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law so these feel tighter meaning harder to game but i think it's still i don't think there's any way you could not make a set of laws like this gameable hmm. but it certainly feels tighter but by, by, than by the gameable three laws you mean like by gameable you mean like there's you can give it scenarios or create manufacture situations where these laws become wishy-washy is right that what you mean I yeah so if i wanted a robot to hurt people because mm-hmm. i'm evil but i can't tell it to go murder somebody can i get it to do actions that end up there but i haven't violated it make it not violate any of these laws mm. uh so I, I feel like you could create dilemmas you could create conflicts of interest so that it has to I violate see. one in order to do anything i see so. oh wow you okay so okay so the laws individually all make sense together they all make sense but you're saying you can create situations where to do either an action to either do an action or an inaction or, or to do anything you're going to violate yeah. one of them i guess a good example we came up with was pollution and ocp if okay. ocp pollutes the river that harms people down the line in a, in a village down the river yep. but if you stop ocp and put them out of business from, because they can't pollute anymore then everybody loses their job and they go into squalor so which one do I do? And I can't do inaction. So I got to pick one. And picking one violates something. That's complicated. It's complicated. I think it's impossible to write perfect laws like that, but it's fun. On the plus side, we we get an insight <laughs> into how RoboCop works. And and I'm calling it here in 1987 RoboCop was predicted body cams. And let's see the evidence. Happy New Year. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, that's weird. First of all, that's weird because it's, <laughs> it's celebrating New Year. I get it. They're working on this project. Super fun, right? But then this engineer, she kisses Robocop's eyes, right? Like, isn't that like Happy New Year? Let me kiss your eyes. Like, like lady. <laughs> like, like, yeah, that's, that, is, that is weird. Because, that's so weird, right? Because that's his sensor. That's his eye. Here's and a little all... lipstick and you can't see stuff. She didn't even come like, in with little Windex after. Like kiss him on the cheek, kiss him on the forehead. Like those, both of those yeah. make sense to me. Even on the lips, that's weird. But at least it's like a normal place. Uh, who kisses in the eyes? What is this? What super weird? Okay, what? what I, think, not, not, I think I think in the room, forehead makes the most sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes the most sense. Uh, but that's not the point of this. Okay, let's keep going. Mm-hmm. Okay. Robocop. Okay, he stands up. Stands up his eye level with everyone, right? Mm-hmm. When you are at rest, you will sit in the chair. Yes, I understand. Okay, but then but then he's eye level. He, he's standing up and mm-hmm. he's clearly taller than everyone. And so right. eye right, level's right. at the chest, actually. Right? It's like he's he's same level, or this is their height, whatever their height is. And yeah. they're looking at his sensor, his camera, wherever it is, right? Yeah. But then we see it from an external angle, and he's clearly taller than them. And in fact, their heads are about chest level, right? Yeah. So I, I think what that means is that the the camera or like the perspective that we're seeing here is actually RoboCop's chest. So you're saying that's RoboCop's body cam? Yeah, right. There's, there's got to be a camera right there in the middle of his chest. Mm-hmm. So RoboCop predicted body cams back in 1987 and calling it. I, I believe it. Okay, ready for this? Yep. This is weird now because she she kissed him she kissed him in his sensor like in his camera right. Mm-hmm. That means she kissed him in his chest. She's like Happy New Year, Robocop. Let me get down and kiss your chest. I mean, lips would be weird. Eyes would be weird. So, so she chest. goes like metal plate chest. Okay, I get it. I guess kind of like weird but sure i mean but but that else but okay but but also that means that here they're talking to his chest and like everyone's eye contact with his chest so they, they made yeah. like they made a robot that's humanoid they gave him they gave him a face they gave him a face from an actual human and mm-hmm. then instead of looking him in the eyes they all look at his chest 
That's wouldn't, be, wouldn't that be super weird? Like you've got like you've got you go to work and you have a clear face that like your your eyes and your ears and your mouth and like all the sensory inputs and then everyone's like, look at his chest. Like I'm gonna talk to the chest. Like <laughs> what? what? Well, I guess so if, weird. If, so, if somebody's really tall, uh huh, and your your eyes are at chest level, yeah. You look up. No, you, look you don't look. You don't look up. You stare right at their chest. You just look at their chest, and as you're Super talking, weird. okay, but they're not talking to RoboCop, right? Watch. They still would look at his come face. On. When you were... come on, come on, come on, come on. When... It's like going up to a super tall basketball player, like, "Hey, how'd the game go?" But you're like only looking right at their heart. <laughs> like, like this, That's right. There's a person up here. <laughs> super yeah. weird. That's super weird. weird. That's weird. Okay, but the cool thing though is that Robocop's got a body cam right there. Maybe it's these things. Maybe it's this thing. I don't know. But he's got a body cam there. Totally predicted. Police with wearing body cams. I love it. Yeah. Check the footage. Check the footage. Turn it off. No. So Robocop is deployed. This is his first battle. What is going on in this, I don't know, liquor store, convenience store? Will there be anything else, sir? Yeah, I emptied the register and put the money in the bag. So give me your money and all of it and don't fuck with me! Now move! Open the safe, Pops. Okay, okay, Open first thing, first thing. The, Detroit has high crime. Yeah. How are these shopkeepers so naive that they're not protecting themselves? There's like, <gasps> crime? I had no idea I'm in downtown Detroit. Like, it's filled with crime. <laughs> but that's right. How, how is this your first time? Maybe, yeah. So they don't have a gun of their own. They don't have a security yeah. guy. They're not even watching him all the way up until he gets, he gets all the way up. Kind of, maybe this guy is distracted. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's looking at these things. He's like, oh, milk. We have not been selling enough milk. Maybe I should lower this price from 179 a little bit lower. A little bit lower. He walks right up on them. And yeah, no gun, no, no plexiglass, no procedures, nothing. I mean, right. I'm not expecting the mom and pop store to have amazing security, but like, no, no, if they're getting... If they're in downtown Detroit and it's a hellscape, they're going to take some precautions, right? You gotta, you gotta. Otherwise, this happens. Maybe, yeah. Or maybe this is maybe they just opened the shop. This is their first maybe. week in operation because the safe placement is suspicious. We don't have a safe. Shit! <laughs> it's like plain sight, hidden, hidden behind a bunch of empty cans. Like a, imagine if you're going in there scouting out the joint and you're like hmm you have a whole a whole little, little mountain there of empty cans like I wonder, yeah. wonder what's behind there a safe gosh it's such a weird location for a safe that I wouldn't even think to look behind the empty cans that's true hidden in plain sight is like you have something that shouldn't be there but it's right there like the, the safe is not behind the counter it's actually to the side of the counter it's plain view of a customer that's right so if the safe is just out, I can notice it's a safe and I know it's there. Mm -hmm. But otherwise I'm thinking it's in the back room, right? Yeah, sure. If I saw beer cans stacked up, I'm not thinking safe. Oh, really? Well, well, oh. I would think it's a safe. Why, do you, why, okay, why does the store owner have a bunch of empty cans out front, like displaying empty, just display the full cans? Okay, well, how do you know they're empty before you kick them? I see. They're, so, they're like so, waving so the I, wind a little bit. I, <laughs> they're air conditioning. <laughs> they don't have enough. But yeah, that's it. So, so I heard they were empty because of the way they clattered went in. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that he wouldn't have had heard the clatter because they were stationary, right? Mm -hmm. But in order for them to clatter as if they're empty, that means that the liquid must have been removed. Yeah. Which means the tops are open, which yep. he can see from he can which see. He can see. Unless you're saying this liquor store owner like carefully lifted the tops, like <laughs> and he like got in there with like a pliers and like tweezers and like lifted that little tab back into place. No way. Yeah. Plus, how annoying would it have to be to open the safe? Oh, yeah, He's done all this. Unstack, unstack the, the cans every time. <sighs> unstack Weird. the cans that are in plain sight. Oh, I guess it's behind. It's behind. People won't. Someone at the window wouldn't see that happening. But a customer would. I mean, I mean, I, I, if it's closed, like you shut down the shop for for the night. I see. And so only customers or would be customers that are outside, like peering in through the window, 
then they'd see it. That means you can only access the safe outside of business hours. Someone rolls in with 50 and you're like, sorry, no change. Sorry, no Come change. back tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Actually, the best place for a for a safe would have been here, inside the television. Oh, there you go. Right? No one <laughs> it's expects a fake that. TV. Like an yeah. op it's like an operational real television. You just like slice out the side or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let, let's see Robocop. Bitch. Better open at a gun of three. One, two. <laughs> Drop the gun. You are under arrest. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. <laughs> Would that so kill a person? Be. Would that kill a person getting thrown into the into the this into the refrigerator? Yeah, getting hit no, well getting hit by Robocop's arm oh. enough to like to turn you upside down and throw you into a refrigerator or ref the refrigeration section. That's a good point. Okay, okay. He so let's, let's... He, doesn't, he doesn't just get knocked down. He gets knocked down. Okay, okay, okay. Let's think about this. So one thing is that he doesn't get knocked back. Mm -hmm. Like if he was, let's see, let's right there. If if he was standing still. Mm -hmm. And then Robocop's just like, like backhand smash, right? And he went backwards. That means all the force would have come from Robocop, right? Yeah. So what I think this is, is he's running forward. Mm -hmm. Robocop stiff arms his neck. And then yeah. he should fly feet forward and do a little tumble, right? Right? Right. So his momentum is stopped at the upper body and continuing in his lower body, which makes him his feet swing out, which is what happens, right? No. Uh, no, not really. Oh, wait. He goes what? he goes away from Robocop. Oh, he completely changes his direction. Holy cow, that's a lot of force. I thought it was a clothesline. It's not a clothesline. Cause right? right? So, we, so here's yeah. his torso and his arm straight out. Yeah. yeah. And then there's his torso, his arm straight out. Yeah, and the bad guy is flying straight along the arm away from yep. Robocop, which is this direction. And there's the fridge. And he's not running that hard. So, so I, the, the the guy came in, hit Robocop's arm, and then went ninety. His speed, his velocity changed ninety degrees, and he's not tumbling. He's just which means been redirected. Which, which I, I take back everything I said. This this launch is just straight up Robocop. It's nothing to do with mm -hmm. this guy's already existing forward momentum. In fact, Robocop cancels it out and he shoots him sideways. That's an enormous yeah. amount of force. That's like lose both your shoes level of force. It's a lot of force. That happened very quickly with a hard metal surface. This guy's dead. This guy's 100%. He's going to be close. I mean, he hits him in the shoulder, uh, the the collarbones. The clap, yeah. But those are going to be broken for sure, right? Those are broken for sure, yeah. Either way, it ain't gonna be pretty. Yeah, cool place to land though. Oh yeah, just, just chill out there for a little bit. The, yeah, the <laughs> shelving the and the eggs gave way enough to cushion the blow. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, all the styrofoam egg cartons <laughs> absorbed the, absorbed the impact. Why are there eggs in here? What is this place? At first, I thought it was a liquor store, but I think it's a convenience store, like a bodega or something. But bodega, weird. <laughs> is that the New York term? I think it's the New York term. With lots of liquor selection, but also with some food and other conveniences. Hmm. Okay. See, yeah. Yeah. Heavy on the liquor. <laughs> um, but I see. Yeah, like food. Conveniences like some, detergent. Some snackies. Yeah. Some some soap. When you run out of soap, you don't want to go to all the grocery store and get some there. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, you know. Okay. Convenience store. These things full of popcorn. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's like the cheddar popcorn, the caramel popcorn, mm -hmm. and the yep, yep. third one. I forget what the third one is. Yeah. So snacks, conveniences, and liquor. With naive mom and pop running the place. Okay. Bummer. They try. 
Let me try it. Well, this is a newscast, newscast about RoboCop after he rescues the mayor and fights crime. It's kind of interesting. RoboCop. Who is he? <laughs> what is he? He is OCP's newest soldier <laughs> in their revolutionary the crime management program. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, like this is super fun, right? So he does this mm -hmm. like turn around and all the mm -hmm. kids following him around like little ducklings. Mm -hmm. He does this turn around and startles them. Super, yep. <laughs> super good. That's good. That's good public relations. And then also this girl comes and shakes his finger. You know, little kids like grab your finger, right? Mm -hmm. But also, but look at this race, race relations. An African American yeah. little girl, Robocop, and got like a white face, I guess. I don't know. And uh, yeah, like she feels comfortable going up and touching. Like, that's great. That's super good. He's, pro he's protecting the public trust and the innocent. That's right. Crime management program. OCP spokesman claimed that the fearless machine has crooks on the run in old Detroit. Today, kids at Lee Iacocca Elementary School got to meet in person yeah, what their parents only read about in comic books. Any special message for all the kids watching at home? Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Solid advice. Mm -hmm. So Robocop is uh, natural. Look at it, absolute natural. Like, mm -hmm. like, do you have any advice? And then Robocop turns and looks at the camera. That's smooth. That's real good. Right. That's real good. That's perfect sound bite. He's not like looking Ooh. off at the sky somewhere. Like mm -hmm. with, with a pause. Good. With a pause. Oof, that's good. Gosh, but how much crime can Robocop be stopping? <laughs> He's just one of them. That's right. Yeah. So really what he's saying is don't like don't do crime when I'm there in the room. Right? That's right. So if you're going to rob the store and I'm there, don't do it. Do it tomorrow. Right. Just scout out where I'm assigned and then go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Do crime elsewhere. Hmm. Yeah, but Unless imagine, they have a fleet of RoboCops. That's right. Yeah, imagine a RoboCop in every corner. Whew. That would Which be some authoritarian. Yeah. This is the advantage of ED-209, is you can mass manufacture them, whereas Robocops need partially dead people. <laughs> That's right. Wait, was Murphy fully dead or partially dead? He's partially dead. Partially. I mean, I guess he was shot in the head. Mm -hmm. So he would have died. I mean, he was dead. Was, it, was he full but dead? I don't remember. I think he was full dead. But oh. I guess biological functions take a long time to come all the way down. So maybe they grab him up and they put him in RoboCop and the rudimentary functions are maintained. I don't know. I'm just a physicist. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. RoboCop world. So this scene, Dick chastises Bob for not following corporate procedures. I'm not sure what you'd say, but Dick understands the game. You're supposed to get as much money as you can for yourself and the corporation now. No, it's not about working. It's not about effectiveness. It's about money now. Let's watch. Yeah. You've insulted me, and you've insulted this company with that bastard creation of yours. I had a guaranteed military sale with Ed 209. Renovation program. Bare parts for 25 years. Who cares if it worked or not? The old man thought it was pretty important. Dick. Dick. I mean, Dick is playing the game. He's saying mm -hmm. contracts... Hardware, maintenance, supplies for 25 years, contracts right now. Everybody's mm -hmm. getting paid. Everybody's getting their bag. What? What's What's Bob worried about? He's worried about effectiveness? This is OCP. Right. I mean, effectiveness is important. You want your product to do the thing that it's supposed to do. But if it does it so well that your company can't make more, then you've not done a good job as a corporate CEO person. Like Dick, Dick's the bad guy. Super, super clearly he's a bad guy. But also he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's working mm -hmm. for a company and the company has a duty to the shareholders, not the customers, to make money. And so Dick has a plan. Dick has a plan for the ED-209 to, have, to require replacement parts, to have new models and whatever he said. Gosh, it makes, that is, it, that is wild. It's wild. Corporations look out for the shareholders. Not the customers. Customers, right. you F them over if you can. As long as the shareholders are getting paid, you're getting paid, everybody's getting paid. Who cares? If I remember, that's actually a Supreme Court ruling, right? That the that companies do not have an obligation to protect the customers. They have an obligation to deliver money to the shareholders. This is another one of those examples. A little bit too close to home. Like if people oh, yeah, die, I if people see. get hurt, if customers get screwed over. 
or ripped off, who cares? As long as you maintain your profitability and you get those sweet, sweet contracts, you're good. In this, in the, you mean in this fictional dystopian universe? Yes, I mean in this fictional dystopian universe. In our, in our world, we have integrity at the top and in the C-suite. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is this is a caricature of a dystopian nightmare that would never come to pass in the real world. It's a caricature, just like a really good one. No, no move, move, no. I can't, I can't, I can't be here anymore. <laughs> it gets even worse. OCP runs the police. I say we pull him in, run a systems check for Take works. a week, maybe 10 Wait, minutes. Wait, you want to take him offline because he had a dream? What are you kidding? Let's get out of here. Listen, Reed, yeah, try and keep one thing in mind. This project doesn't concern cops. It's classified. It's OCP. You got it, mister? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so this doesn't happen in real life. In real life, the government is looking out for the public good and justice. Yeah. Right? And corporations have absolutely no say in the matter or influence or even direct ownership of any of the government. So, I mean, RoboCop is, the movie is just a total, Detroit is a dystopian nightmare that wouldn't happen in the real world. I see what you're saying, but I think that's right. Because corporations corporations don't have political say, it's people do, of which corporations are people. Yeah. Yeah, corporations may not own the police right now, but they do own prisons. As ah oh, yeah, it's weird. It's weird, Nick. Weird perverse incentives. Yeah, and we don't we don't have mercenaries in the real world that go we out don't. and do police actions. I think you mean contractors. Contractors. Con oh, so. my bad. Contractors. Yeah, contractors. Yeah. They just do things for contracts. Yeah, just 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 a hired hired. They signed a contract on the dotted line. They're doing their job. Hey man, mm -hmm. I work here. Yeah, I see. I see. Oh, gosh. I see what you're saying. This weird mix of the law and companies that have different incentives and, we, and tacit approval of violence in the name of dollars. Actually, not even tacit. Explicit. 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 Yeah. Because, sorry, contractors, yeah. they do violence and they get paid for a fee. Well, so the company, the contracting company gets paid and mm -hmm. then the contractors who run the things get paid mm -hmm. and they're just doing a job, but Correct. it's violent. Somewhere else. Are they mercenaries? They, they are mercenaries. I mean, they do war stuff for dollars. Yeah, I guess that's a mercenary. So is it, do cops are police departments owned by corporations in real world today? No, but this no. feels way too plausible. It it's almost there, right? It's it's almost there. It's not fully out of the realm of possibilities. It's close. I don't like it. Bit. I don't like it. it I don't bit. like it. It hurts a little bit. Okay, but well, you know what doesn't hurt? The iconic <laughs> lips. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look at this. These, all of this acting comes from just this lips. This, these are the most expressive lips in all of uh, all of film. Okay, Hell so yeah. iconic. It's so recognizable that the bad guys recognize him from his lips. Drop it. That are alive. You are coming with me. I know you. You're dead. We killed you! We killed you! Okay, but but how? How how could this guy recognize Robocop? Like this is a this is a generic helmet, generic body. There's no way to recognize him except for the lips. Okay, so if it was a friend you've known for a long time, years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you see you do a lip lineup. Could you recognize your friend? I kind of want to say maybe. Wait, 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 lip lineup, lip lineup. You're talking about like you're at the police station behind that two-way mirror and you're like, they're like, like, like perp number one through five, cover up your, cover up your face. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. just only lip. And you're like, oh yeah, I recognize yeah. your lips. I recognize my. Maybe, I want to say maybe. You were pretty good at really? facial recognition. Really? How, how often do you, I look at people in the eyes. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? I mean, you look them in the eye, but you see the whole, you're, you're, it's, you see the whole face like our 
and commit it to memory? I don't. Is, I don't want to say that, it's perfect, but you could. Okay, I, okay. I thought could, this guy. I thought this guy was a lip freak. Like this is his thing. Like his. Like that's his his particular just him the kink that's, that sets him apart from all the homies in the hood. Is he memorizes people's lips? I, I think. I think you're right though, because it's not like this guy knew Murphy for years beforehand. He saw yeah, no him way, no like way. for a very very short time, and then he was mangled by bullets. That's right. And somehow he like memorized Murphy's lips, which means he's dialed okay. in. So, so, okay. So I'm, so I interpreted it as he is, has some weird lip fetish mm -hmm. where he just is really mm -hmm. dialed into people's lips. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying is actually maybe not, it's, it's maybe not a weird thing. It's, it's just that humans are really good at reading people's faces because it is a part of a part of functioning in society is you need to be able to read and gauge and judge people's emotions and expressions so you're saying the human brain is programmed to read and read a little little the twinge of a, a lip it could be a difference between a smirk or a smile or someone saying really nasty so you need to read people's faces and so you're saying that this guy's super good at it some in fact maybe maybe even better than other people who knows whatever but he can recognize the lips i'm saying I think there's that automatic system in, in our in humans, but I'm saying he's sus suspiciously good at it that I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Okay. That he is maybe got some kind uh, of lip thing going on where he's like looking everybody he's a set, he's re remembering. And it's and in your and you're saying that it's more likely that people can read lips or memorize lips or recognize lips than like an elbow or whatever because like. Humans yeah. read people's faces. They don't uh, like checking your elbow. Like, hey, Jim, that's Jim's elbow. Like, it's Jim, it's Jim. How many yeah. Okay, okay, I buy that. Still weird though. Like, I think it gosh, is weird. That's so. That's so little human to recognize. He's like, I remember <laughs> you. I shot you like six weeks ago. Like, incredible. Mm. Incredible. Yeah. That guy could have had lots of careers that weren't crime without those mm -hmm. skills. Incredible. Mm -hmm.